Gynecologic oncology is a unique specialty. Born out of a profession dedicated to women's health, it is more than just a career path for its practitioners. Today, 50 years after the first annual meeting of the Society of Gynecologic Oncology, members tell us why they chose the field. It was the patients. The relationships we had with the patients, the challenge of the surgery, doing both surgery and chemotherapy, and basically the entire care from start to finish uh, in, uh, in patients with GYN cancers has just been, it's a, been a phenomenal experience. So quite some time ago, um, I saw a 26-year-old die of advanced ovarian cancer and was just very distraught that that was not a fair outcome and I'm a pharmacology by, ba uh, by training and was very frustrated with the mechanisms of drug resistance in ovarian cancer and really wanted to fight to improve that. My father was a vascular surgeon who was actually the second African-American uh, vascular surgeon to practice in the city of Los Angeles. And I used to work with him in his practice when I was in high school and college and he took care of a very underserved population. So caring for the underserved is sort of in my blood, so to speak, and surgery is sort of in my blood because I really like the ability to see an immediate result and work with my hands and solve a puzzle. The first individuals to ask themselves, why gynecologic oncology, were two obstetrician gynecologists, John Makuta and Hervey Averett. Both men agreed there was a need for a medical society to serve physicians who treated women with gynecologic cancers. After months of correspondence, the doctors made plans to meet at an OB-GYN conference in 1968. Legend has it that notes were jotted down on cocktail napkins in the hotel lounge. In January 1969, the first meeting for the Society of Gynecologic Oncologists was held at the Key Biscayne Hotel in Miami. In those days, we were trained originally uh, to be gynecologic radical surgeons, as radical as need be. We were trained to do chemotherapy on our own and to do radiation therapy planning and to coordinate the different disciplines so that a GYN oncologist was really competent to do or consult on the doing of any treatment of women's cancers. When I was a fellow, for instance, the main drugs we had were the alkylators and um, these were either oral or IV um, uh, preparations and the um, median survival for a patient with stage 3 ovarian cancer was 10 to 12 months. Over the years, SGO's membership expanded from the 37 founding members to more than 1,000 members by the early 2000s. In 2010, membership was opened up to allied health professionals and other specialists were allowed to become full members. The next year, SGO was officially renamed the Society of Gynecologic Oncology. And by the 2015 annual meeting, SGO had reached a milestone of 2,000 members. I think the most important change, because, you know, I'm on the older side of the membership, has just been the increase in diversity of membership. Not only more women, but there's been more racial and ethnic diversity, uh, uh, differences in gender orientation in the organizations embracing those diver those diverse groups. We have now become very inclusive in including medical oncologists, radiation oncologists, general OBGYNs, nurse practitioners, and I think that's one of the most exciting things about being a member of this society because the way we take care of patients now, it's all about being part of a team. Supporting a team approach for women with gynecologic cancers involves ongoing education for members. Peer-reviewed research has become the cornerstone of live meetings and the Gynecologic Oncology Journal. It has been a very interesting and outstanding opportunity for sharing experiences on research and screening and new projects in low and middle income countries. And many researchers from different uh, parts of the country and 
different parts of the world, the entire globe, could come and join forces and share experiences and experience leadership from SGO members on this international session provided by SGO. I spent seven years uh, running a basic science research lab uh, that was supported by the uh, then Gynecologic Cancer Foundation, now Foundation for Women's Cancer. For many SGO members, their answer to why gynecologic oncology are the many mentors in the subspecialty. Well, mentorship is everything. So I had incredible mentors at uh, UAB, Dr. Hugh Shingleton, Dr. Ken Hatch, Dr. Jimmy Orr, Dr. Max Austin, Dr. Ed Partridge, Dr. Larry Kilgore. All of these folks were either SGO presidents or vice presidents or council members. My you know, mentors have taught me everything from initial diagnosis and screening through care, care of relapse, but also how to have challenging conversations along the way, how to give news about a relapse and to the patient and to her family, how to take care of a patient at the end of her life. As ongoing research results in clinical practice changes, SGO members can look forward to a promising future for their subspecialty and their patients. I see the society still being the mainstay of science for the care of gynecologic cancer. I also see the society is moving even more into the aspects of funding and care. But most importantly, I think this society has to maintain its voice as the authority and the advocate for women with gynecologic cancer. I think it's really a matter of a couple of things. One is precision medicine. Um, individualized therapy because we know now that all ovarian cancers don't respond the same, even subtypes. And so um, molecular profiling has really come to play a huge role in successful treatment um, of individuals with gynecologic cancers. And then I think also continued development of these therapeutics and then also a number of um, targeted molecules uh, beyond conventional chemotherapy, figuring out what combinations are smart um, with these agents. Of course, one of the major uh, events or achievements is an HPV vaccine. I mean, developing a vaccine that prevents cancer is huge. We may be done with these cancers 50 years from now, uh, and then we could be the society that used to take care of gynecologic oncology, and wouldn't that be fabulous? Why gynecologic oncology? The society looks forward to the next 50 years in the hopes of fulfilling SGO's stated vision to eradicate gynecologic cancers. The 50-year anniversary is quite exciting because it not only represents all the work that other GM oncologists have done throughout the years to get us to this point, but it's also the idea of what progress we have made and can make in the future in terms of really trying to answer the next question, you know, how can we treat our patients so they can actually feel satisfied with their treatment and also get them to the best survival that we can. I want to say congratulations to SGO on 50 years um, and I want to thank SGO um, as a junior investigator uh, for supporting me in my research and um, uh, helping provide me with mentorship and education that um, has really helped me as a, a junior uh, investigator in our field. I met those old guys in Key Biscayne when they were sitting around writing down things on a napkin. And thank you for doing that, by the way. Um, I bet they would not have envisioned a group so big, so diverse, so incredible as the SGO we have today.